The power of the elders will never fall to the snakes. The Sorceress from the He-Man universe. Hello everyone and welcome back to another magical and astonishing video by the one and only Marvelous Videos. I'm your host Gemma and today we will be talking about a unique character from the He-Man franchise. She is well known, really powerful and protects Castle Greyskull from the evil Skeletor. She is the mighty magic welder, the sorceress of Castle Greyskull. Today we will be talking about the sorceress and all there is to know about her. Without further ado, grab a bucket of popcorn and get ready to be swept into this magical world. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. That's it. Um, I'm different. Origin of the Sorceress Explored. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, 1983. The episode, Origin of the Sorceress, marks the very first time the subject was ever discussed. This origin story was also the 73rd episode of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. In this episode, the sorceress told He-Man how she obtained her powers and how she got the role of the Guardian of Castle Greyskull while they awaited a battle with the evil wizard Morgoth. Let's see what happened in this episode in brief. The episode began with Prince Adam and Cringer relaxing in the royal palace. Everything seemed to be fine, but Orko could not relax, wondering what Man-at-Arms had been working on his lab. Just as Prince Adam was teasing Orko about his restlessness, Man-at-Arms revealed himself and his newest invention, the robotic horse Stridor. Out of nowhere, Stridor whined loudly as it was supposed to do whenever it sensed danger. Suddenly a wheel of fire appeared above the palace, shooting huge stones and meteors all over the palace. Feeling the palace was in danger, Prince Adam and Cringer transformed into He-Man and Battle Cat and joined the others in deflecting the onslaught and dispelling the fiery ring. He-Man and Man-at-Arms were totally astonished by this surprise attack when suddenly the sorceress telepathically summoned He-Man to Castle Greyskull for answers. She insisted he came alone and came fast, so He-Man decided to take Stridor with him. At Greyskull, after He-Man arrived, the sorceress explained that she actually recognized the Wheel of Fire as the work of Morgoth the Terrible. This evil magician used to be a sorcerer a long time ago. Morgoth had sought out immeasurable powers, powers which should not be obtained by mere mortals to conquer both Eternia and the entire universe. In his quest for power, he gained immortality and was turned into a huge giant. According to the sorceress, the ancients had cast a spell on him, which trapped him in an inescapable prison dimension. At first, they thought they were safe, but Morgoth had clearly found a way out and now everything was in danger of extinction. She suggested that she and He-Man must take a stand at Dark Mountain. In order to retain her human form, all of her powers full potential, she employed the Crystal of Alinar. In the ruins at Dark Mountain, He-Man and the Sorceress kept a lookout for any potential attacks through the night, even though she was confident that Morgoth was set in his ways and would not make his move until dawn. Better safe than sorry, right? She recalled her last encounter with Morgoth, which made He-Man realize that even the Sorceress was once new to all this and had no idea how to take care of her role or her powers. Using her powers, the sorceress showed him how she used to be when she was a mere mortal girl named Tila Na, who lived in the village of Noella. As the sorceress explained, Noella was a quiet, peaceful community until Morgoth secretly escaped his prison and caught the attention of a small alien fleet that was serving as a scouting party for a vast interstellar army bent on conquest. This advanced force aided Morgoth in capturing Noella, but at the same time disagreed with him about whether to summon reinforcements or not. Although the end seemed to be near and everyone had lost hope of being saved, an old man suggested that their last chance at saving themselves was to find the castle. Curious, Tilana tried to make her tell her more about it and he explained that there was a prophecy that when the evil times came, a fighter for good was in need, the castle 
vassal of Greyskull would open its jaw bridge. Not knowing if the old man was speaking the truth or not, Tila Nar took directions from him and escaped out into the wastelands in search of Castle Greyskull. After wandering all night aimlessly and on the verge of giving up, she saw the castle materialize in front of her own eyes and was called inside by a mysterious voice coming from inside the castle. Inside, Tila Nar was tired and confused, and that is when she met Kudok Ungal, who was the sorceress and the guardian of Castle Greyskull. Kudok Ungal offered Tila Nar the opportunity to take her place as the sorceress, which would give her the powers to fight off Morgoth and the invaders, making sure everyone was finally saved, but all these powers were not for free. The guardian of the castle had to be at war with evil at all times, help those in need and protect the swords of power. Tila Nar accepted her offer and upon receiving the powers of the sorceress, she gained the ability to transform into a mystical falcon called Zoar. Honestly, I feel kind of bad for her because she was not only in dire need of help back then, but she practically signed off her whole life to protect Noella. But honestly, she also gained a lot of friends along the way. So I guess it's okay. When Tila Na returned to Noella with her newfound powers, she used them to chase off the invading aliens and made their ships go far away so that they could not report back to their masters until Eternia was in state to actually fight off a full-scale invasion. Instead of testing her skills against Morgoth, like any other basic protagonist, she surprised him with a sudden attack, which made him return back to his prison zone before he had a chance to even counter her attack. Smart move, Teela. Good job. After a heartwarming goodbye, she returned to Castle Greyskull to assume her new responsibilities and discovered that the previous sorceress, Kurdok Ungal, was gone. Just as the sorceress was finishing her story, Morgoth returned in his Wheel of Fire to place a humongous gem on the ground, which would let him link himself to Eternia. He-Man attacked Morgoth without a second thought, but soon started to struggle as he could not seem to overcome Morgoth's protective barrier and destroy the gem. In fact, Morgoth assured him that no living being is capable enough to penetrate this barrier. Well, Morgoth, what about the non-living, living things though? However, Stridor suddenly ran full speed into the barrier and penetrated it with ease. This stunned He-Man, but he was glad they still stood a chance. Morgoth frantically blasted Stridor with his magic, but the robotic bee succeeded in dodging some of those attacks and kicking the gem into He-Man's reach. Angered by seeing Stridor almost breaking down by the impact of those attacks, He-Man grabbed the gem and broke it into two pieces and threw it back at Morgoth with full force, which banished him once more back to the prison realm. Morgoth, my man, maybe it's better you just do not try to attack Eternia and go attack maybe anti-Eternia for once? After defeating Morgoth and saving Eternia yet again, He-Man carried Strider all the way back to the palace for repairs. Once the robot was fully functional again, Man-at-Arms analysed its thought patterns to discover that Stridor longed to be free and run in the wild. The sorceress concluded that Stridor was no longer merely a machine and that its experience with Morgoth had made it into something more. He-Man and Man-at-Arms agreed and tearfully but happily set Stridor free and thanked the sorceress for her years of work in the service of good. Fun fact, this episode was the only episode in the entire He-Man and the Masters of the Universe series to reference She-Ra, Princess of power. Now, when you wish to return, simply contact me again through the sword. The Sorceress was a major character in She-Ra, Princess of Power. Before we get into the story, you must be wondering, who is She-Ra? Well, to be accurate, Adora, a teenage girl who could transform into a hero called She-Ra, who also gets her powers from Castle Greyskull, was actually He-Man's twin sister who was abducted at birth and was mind controlled for the majority of her life. In the She-Ra, Princess of Power series, the sorceress summoned Prince Adam to find Princess Adora and give her the Sword of Protection, which looked just like the one He-Man used, but the only difference was that it had a jewel on it. Adora even turned into She-Ra for the first time when the sorceress talked to her telepathically and told her about her destiny and revealed who she was to He-Man. Hence, you can say that the sorceress kind of was the reason She-Ra was born in the first place. Keep this with you and Eternia will always be near. 
The Sorceress in the 1987 live-action film. In the live-action film, the sorceress was shown being held captive by none other than the main antagonist of the whole show, Skeletor. Somehow, the Dark Lord Skeletor had managed to take control over Castle Greyskull and, in turn, had already accomplished his first goal. His next goal was to take the powers of Castle Greyskull when the Great Eye opened and Eternia's moon was correctly aligned. While all this was going down, He-Man had rescued Gwildor, who claimed to be the inventor and the locksmith of the Castle Greyskull. Gwildor told He-Man that Skeletor stole the cosmic key from him, which gave him access to the castle. He told He-Man that the cosmic key was his newest invention and that it could teleport anyone to any place and at any time. Just as He-Man started devising a plan to counter this information, Wildor revealed that he had also made a prototype. As they soon noticed, that Skeletor's centurions were arriving, Gwildor led the others into a secret passageway that took them straight into the castle. When they entered the castle, He-Man was ready for a fight, but saw the throne empty. Instead of being happy, he was concerned about this. While Gwildor tried to free the sorceress from her confines, the group was surrounded by Skeletor and his trusted troops. Gwildor got extremely scared, and in a panic, he used the key and opened a random gateway that He-Man and his friends used to escape. As they walked through, they realised that they had actually reached Earth. After arriving there, the key suddenly got misplaced and the Eternians separated to search for it. While the Eternians were searching for it, two teenage lovers named Julia Winston and Kevin Corrigan discovered the key in a crater and curiously started pressing its buttons, thinking it was some kind of music device or stereo or something. Come on kids, you know you should not start touching something random that you picked up from the ground. At the castle, Skeletor's second-in-command, known as Evil in, tracked the key back to Earth and prepared a small team of mercenaries to recover it. This team consisted of Saurad, Blade, Beastman and their leader, Karg. Kevin and Julia were spending the evening together, not just by chance. They were together because Julia was leaving town because of a personal tragedy and all she wanted to do was say goodbye to her boyfriend and her school that day. However, after finding the device, Kevin got curious and took it away to get a second opinion leaving Julia all alone. Suddenly, a portal opened, which the mercenaries used to travel to the last known location of the prototype key. There, they found Julia and opened fire on her in the gym. Julia jumped behind the cover and screamed for help. Soon, the mercenaries lost track of her and during this, He-Man, who was searching for the key nearby, heard Julia's distress cry. He ran to save her and started fighting the mercenaries. Soon, he managed to save Julia while his comrades, Teela, and man-at-arms chased the mercenaries away. On the return of the mercenaries, Skeletor was so infuriated by their failure that he destroyed Sarod in anger with a lightning bolt. This time, Evil Lin and the others returned to Earth with an even bigger army. Meanwhile, Kevin returned to his high school, which had nearly been burnt down to ashes. The policeman on the scene, Detective Lubick, took Kevin to Julia's desolate house to look for her. Suddenly, the phone rang and Kevin picked it up. It was Julia on the other side of the phone. She revealed the importance of the cosmic key to him, but before Julie could arrive, Lubeck got interested in the device and took it from Kevin, suspecting it was stolen. Immediately afterward, Evil Lynn and her troops broke into the house and interrogated Kevin and then soon left to catch the policeman. After He-Man reached the house with his comrades and Julia, Julia and Kevin decided to lead the Eternians to where Lubeck had taken the key, a music store where Kevin had been earlier on. Soon, a battle ensued inside the music store with He-Man and Man-at-Arms holding back the Centurions while Gwildor attempted to open a doorway back to Eternia. During the fight, Evil Lynn took on the persona of Julia's mom, who was supposed to have died in a plane crash. While Lubeck, Kevin and Gwildor argued, Julia was persuaded to steal the cosmic key for her mother and did not realise that it was all a lie until it was too late. After getting the key, Evil Lynn and the others fled while He-Man chased after them. But soon another gateway opened up and it was Skeletor who came to Earth to make sure that his plan was going to succeed. While the Centurions marched down the roads, He-Man swiftly used a stolen hoverboard to reach the army and stole the key back from Evil Lynn's grip. 
Thinking he had won, He-Man looked back just to see that Skeletor had surrounded all his friends, including Julia and Kevin. What he did not know was that Skeletor had also set up a trap for He-Man. Despite the fact that He-Man was against hundreds alone, he fought off the troops until Skeletor delivered his ultimatum. Either He-Man surrendered and became his slave, or else he would torture and kill every single one of his friends. With no choice but to surrender, He-Man left and returned with Skeletor, while the others were left behind behind on Earth. What was even worse was that Skeletor's magic injured Julia and the prototype key was damaged beyond repair. Back at Castle Greyskull, Skeletor prepared for the Great Eye to open and was getting ready to receive its power while he tortured He-Man and demanded him to kneel down before he was executed. While He-Man was being tortured, Wildor attempted to repair the key but explained that the tones needed to activate it were erased. Ah, so it was a music device, kinda. Kevin went back to the music store and took a keyboard which he could use to create the tones and open the portal. Just as Skeletor got his new powers and mentioned how he felt stronger than even God himself, the portal opened and the final battle began. Lubick, Kevin, Man-at-Arms and Teela all fought off the Centurions from behind cover while He-Man broke free from his chains and recovered his sword. Soon Skeletor and He-Man clashed and went toe to toe and during the immense battle He-Man successfully managed to break Skeletor's staff and as he did that all of Skeletor's new powers vanished. He-Man told the weakened Skeletor that it was over but Skeletor plunged at him with a hidden knife. He he tried cutting He-Man but He-Man soon managed to knock Skeletor down the huge pit that surrounded the throne room. As they achieved victory and the sorceress used her powers to heal Julia, it finally seemed like everything was going to be okay in Eternia. After Kevin and Julia said their goodbyes to the Eternians, Wildor opened a doorway back to Earth. After returning back, Julia woke up in her bed where she found her parents downstairs alive and well and about to take the flight to their deaths. She managed to stop them and went out to search for Kevin who confirmed that all that they saw was actually real and not a dream. Damn, who knew that each and every story could get progressively better and better? The sorceress really was half the MVP here because without her assistance, He-Man, Julia and honestly everyone would have died by now and Skeletor would have gotten the powers he wanted without breaking a sweat. So, good job, T. Lena. And tell me where the great power lies. Masters of the Universe vs The Snake Men 2002 In the 2002 series, the character design of the sorceress was changed to resemble and evoke the feeling of an Egyptian goddess instead of a falcon. In the series, she was still Teela's mother, but the fact was kept a secret. The episode, Out of the Past, briefly mentioned and discovered the sorceress's history and how Teela was actually conceived after she married an unnamed soldier who supposedly died in battle. Her husband was shown heavily bandaged throughout his appearance and his identity remained unconfirmed till the end of the series. However, it was highly suspected that the man was none other than Man at Arms as the person had the same eyes and build as he did. Plus, the way Man at Arms takes care of Teela, I think it's best to assume that real father or not, Man at Arms is truly a father figure to Teela. If the series were to have a third season, which it unfortunately did not have, it was planned to reveal to Teela that her mother was actually the sorceress herself. Not only does the sorceress know magic, but she is also excellent at combat as well. Not only was she capable of fighting off a band of marauders led by Pravis to save a village, but she was also able to fight King Hiss by unleashing a powerful energy blast against the evil Snake Men's leader before attacking him with her staff. In fact, the sorceress is so powerful that she could defeat Skeletor's second-in-command, Evil Lin, in combat all by herself. Unfortunately, due to a battle with an ancient being, she was bitten by it, which totally poisoned her body. Hence, she was not at 100% and her body still showed scars from when she was poisoned. As a result, she spent the majority of the series resting at the castle. How Masters of the Universe Revelations established 
Tila as the new sorceress. In Masters of the Universe, Revelations, the sorceress of Castle Grayskull could not leave the castle in her human form. That was until Tila became the new sorceress. Tila was able to defy and use the powers of Grayskull freely because the source of her strengths and duties was marked differently from those of her predecessors. The series began with the captain of the Royal Guards, Tila, getting to know the secret that her best friend Prince Adam and the legendary hero He-Man were the same people. Not only was she struck by grief when she realised that Adam nobly sacrificed his life to save everyone and the whole of Eternia, but she was also extremely hurt by the fact that nobody trusted her with this secret. Years passed after this sudden revelation, only for Tila to initiate her own journey where she discovered old and new allies to save Eternia yet again. As Tila was preparing to enter the tide of transformation to save the universe, the sorceress told her that she must sacrifice her own life in order to protect the powers of Grayskull. In order for Tila to truly embrace her destiny, she had to give up on everything including her wants, her likes, and even her future. However, instead of cutting off ties with people so that she felt less guilty when she finally sacrificed herself, she remarked that the bonds were the only things that gave her strength in the first place. She said that these bonds gave her powers stronger than Grayskull ever could. With this new mindset, she chose to use the power to protect Eternia forever. This decision sparked something inside her and she was finally granted powers by the Grayskull, which gave her the right to use them outside Grayskull as well. In fact, unlike the other sorceresses who were meant to save the power of Grayskull, Teela was given the powers to protect her loved ones which were best fulfilled by standing by their side. Though Teela has all the powers and status of the sorceress, her role is more like her best friend and the mighty hero, He-Man. No matter what others say, Teela is probably the strongest sorceress to date and has the most potential out of all of them as she can quite literally bend the rules of Grayskull at her will. Fun fact, did you know that our favourite hero He-Man would have remained Prince Adam for all his life if he did not gain the sorceress's trust? Because the sorceress was the one who gave Prince Adam his sword, which allowed him to turn into the great He-Man. Hence, we can quite easily say that the sorceress quite literally created both He-Man and She-Ra. You're nothing but bones. The Sorceress and her powers, which make her supremely powerful. We have seen the Sorceress in action, but the creators sometimes do not show the full power of each character, and that is why we are here to discuss all of her powers. As we all know that the previous Sorceress could not leave the castle in their human form, and hence they had the power to turn into an ancient falcon and could also telepathically talk to anyone at great distances. Next up, we have magic control. Not only is the sorceress extremely smart, but she can also use magic much better than almost everyone in her universe. Being powered by Grayskull, her magical powers remain unmatched. She is also an excellent tactician, making sure that her plans are always foolproof and hence ensuring that her side always wins. She is also able to lend powers as she once allowed He-Man to fly in one of her appearances temporarily. Last but not least, she is an excellent fighter and has proven to be a match to Evil Lin who is considered to be one of the strongest in their universe. To use my powers and maintain my true form outside Castle Grayskull. Conclusion. The Sorceress, honestly, is such an amazing character that words are not enough to describe her. She is beautiful, powerful, self-reliant and always loving to the people she cares about. She has literally given her life to save others and I would give my life for her. She has overcome so much pain and suffering in her life. This character has tons of potential and hopefully all of her potentials is shown in some series or, if possible, a solo movie that only talks about her and her past origins because we at Marvelous Videos would surely go to watch that movie. If you liked this video, please leave a comment on who your favourite sorceress is and if you liked this, you would surely like the video we made on Anti-He-Man, so go check it out. Until then, adios amigos! We did it, thanks to you and your stories. Now I must go. Goodbye and good luck.